All right, so we'll go ahead and introduce the, uh, the last two refutation tree rules, the rule for the biconditional and the negated biconditional. So we've learned these already, right? The uh, rule for double negation, the rule for disjunction, conjunction, negated disjunction, negated conjunction, conditional, and negated conditional. And before you do, do these next two, make sure you know these rules well, that you've uh, done the worksheets associated with these and you can, you're pretty confident that you uh, know how to operate with them. These last two rules are different and um, have a little bit more potential for confusion. Okay, so the two biconditional rules. Both, both the rules for the biconditional are branching rules. Uh, and they can be understood in terms of the truth table. Everything actually can be understood in terms of the truth table, which you'll remember is this. So uh, the biconditional is true whenever they're both true, right? You got true, true, true and also whenever they're both false. False, false, true. And then false whenever they have opposite truth values. So true, false gives you false and also false, true gives you false, right? So here's how we understand the biconditional in terms of uh, the truth table. So this table tells us that the biconditional is only true when A and B are both true or when A and B are both false, as we just said. So this relationship can be formally expressed this way. So we are using our double turnstile still. And what this is, says is that the biconditional a, if and only if B, using our meta-language now, is logically equivalent to A and B, or not A and not B. So in other words, right, the biconditional is true if and only if A and B are both true, which is one line of the truth table, or another line of the truth table not A and not B are both true, right? So these two, A and B and not A and not B, represent the cases where A and B are true or A and B are false, okay? So think of these as representing the lines of the truth table, and essentially we're saying A if and only if B, if this line of the truth table or that line of the truth table. So this gives us this rule for the by for the biconditional. So A if and only if B, if A and B, or right, if A and B, or not A and not B. So what's interesting about the rule for the biconditional is also for the negated biconditional is it starts as a branching rule, but then it actually lines up uh, the two formulas in non-branching. So it goes branch, non-branch, branch, non-branch. Non so these are the only rules that are kind of have two steps in one. So A if and only if B branches to A and B, and it branches to not A and not B. All right? And also make, make sure you write it just like this. So don't, don't write A, B, A with B to the side, for example, because that's not, uh, that's not keeping it uh, consistent with the, with the uh, rules for, with the way we represent uh, non-branching rules. All right. Well, the rule for the negated biconditional is similar, but it 
represents the other two lines of the truth table, right? So remember that the other two lines, right, where the where the biconditional, so the 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 biconditional being false is the same as the negated biconditional being true, right? So these are the lines we're interested in now. So, not surprisingly, we can express this as the negated by conditional is true. It's not the case that A, if and only if B, when you've got either A and not B, or not A and B. So, again, the negated by conditional is true, which is to say the by conditional is false. The negated by conditional is true when A is true and B is false, or A is false and B is true. So the trick is just to be able to think of the negation as either saying not B or saying B is false. Okay. So this is the rule we get uh, for the uh, negated by conditional. It looks similar, except we've got different values. So it's not the case that A if and only if B branches to A and not B, right? A and not B, or not A and B. All right. So both of these rules make total sense. Uh, they can be made quite intuitive if you think through it the way we did. But really, in the end, you have to memorize them. They have to be something that you can write down very quickly. So that's what you want to make, make sure you do. Um, commit these to memory and uh, make sure you can write all. Now you have all the rules and you should be able to write all of them down uh, out of your head. OK, so well, now we'll, we'll just go ahead and, and do one proof with the uh, involving the, the biconditional and the negated biconditional. And, um, and then we'll do some review questions. So let's do this proof. P if and only if Q or R. I should say this argument. P if and only if Q or R. It's not the case that P if and only if R. Um, therefore, P if and only if Q. All right. So at this point, you know how to start. You line them up like this. And notice that we've taken the conclusion here and we've negated it. And then we look and we see, uh, OK, so they're all biconditionals or negated biconditionals. So they're all uh, they're all branching. So there's no non branching rules. So you can kind of take your pick on what you want to do here. And I'm just going to pick. So uh, you could um, you should go ahead and try this on your own, of course, but it's possible that you'll do it right. And uh, it'll still look different from mine because of the uh, formulas that you choose to chose to operate on first. OK, so suppose I go with the first one, P if and only if Q or R. So that's what this is going to look like. I dispatch it. And right, so remember the rule says either with P if and with with the, with the biconditional, it's A B and not A not B. So here P is A and Q or R is B. So P Q or R not P not Q or R, and always check. Okay, so you look for. Um, Contradictions, there are none. So we move on. Again, we'll just choose one to operate on. Now this is going to get kind of um, messy. Not messy, we're going to keep it real neat, but it has the potential to be messy. Now you notice um, that now we have these two formulas that are available to operate on. And it's not the case that Q or R is what? That's, that's a non-branching rule. So it makes a lot of sense to go ahead 
and operate on it now. Uh, it's not an absolute rule that you have to do this. It's just that usually it makes sense to operate on non-branching rules. So I, I widened this a little bit and I operated on, it's not the case that Q or R dispatch, so not Q and not R. And now I, I have a choice. To, I can either operate on these formulas or I can also operate on this formula, which is a branching rule. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and operate on this formula, partly just because I kind of want to keep, keep everything on the same level, though that's not required. So um, in other words, so you can see right now, if I went ahead and operate on, say, it's not the case that P if and only if R, I'd have to put it here and I'd have to put it here. And so one, one uh, branch would, would be developing higher or lower than the other. That's okay. It doesn't matter. But I'm just going to go ahead for aesthetic reasons to just go ahead and operate on Q or R right now. So we've got Q and R. Now notice, very importantly, really important, I did not write Q or R over here. Okay? I didn't put Q or R over here. Now, why didn't I? Well, because that's not on, on Q or R's branch. You only put things that are underneath. So if I'm operating on, it's not the case that P if and only if R, I gotta, I've got to go under both branches. But if I'm operating on Q or R, or as I operate on, it's not the case that Q or R, I'm just going straight down. So it's a simple idea. You always just have to just decompose the formulas under under all of the formulas that are actually under that branch when you follow it down. Okay, so we've got uh, so far so good, and now we're going to go ahead and just pick one of these formulas to operate on, and I'm going to have to uh, just I'm going to have to uh, put it under here, here, and here. So it's going to get uh, pretty information intense right now. And that's what it's going to look like. Okay, so this is a so I've chosen to operate on P if and only if Q. Excuse me, negated P if and only if Q. So not P if and only if Q. So the rule for not P if not A if and only if B is A not B and not A B. Okay, in that order. So A not B, so P not Q, not P Q. Again, P not Q, not P Q. P not Q, not P Q. I had to, I had to apply this rule to every open formula under the, it's not the case that P if and only if Q. All right. So then um, I'm going to look and I'm going to say, oh, do I have any contradictions? And uh, turns out I do. Not Q and Q, right? So close. Not P and P, right? Follow it up. Not P and P. Close. Not Q, no. P, no. That's P and P, right? R, no. So that's still open. Q not P, not P up here, right? Closed. Not Q, P, there's not P and P right here. Closed. Okay. And Q, not Q. Closed. So there's only one remaining open branch for us to apply the remaining formula to, which is kind of nice. So clean that up a little. It looks like that. All right. And then we go ahead and apply. It's not the case that P if and only if R. So what's that going to look like? Well, we're just going to go ahead and branch, branch right here. Right. And not the case that P, if and only if R, tells us that we need P, not R, 
excuse me, yeah, it should have been erase that. So P not R or, or not P and R. Okay, and then we go ahead and dispatch that. And what are we left with? Well, we got to check to see if, if these close or not. So not R and R, right? There's a contradiction right there. Close and R not P, right? Again, we're always following it up. It's like this doesn't come into play at all. Um, R not P, P. Right, P not P, close. So that means this is what? Right? They all close, so this is valid. All right. So that's how those rules work. And let's go ahead and just do some uh, study questions, which... Uh, will uh, just review of all the diff different rules and uh, some of the basic um, moves in the refutation rule system.